This again is uh, one of the features that ETR desperately needed before we could go into production. And basically uh, the reason for this is that in Switzerland lectures uh, have a pause in them and we would like to sort of, of course, edit the lectures accordingly in order to uh, extract these pauses. Uh, also, this, of course, allows us to do some, some other stuff that teachers ask us for, just remove parts of the, the presentation or whatever. So uh, we knew that we would need uh, um, an enhanced version of the trimming tool before going uh, into production. Also, we wanted uh, a trimming tool that could cope with single stream and as with uh, dual stream, especially with different frame rates. So uh, if it is the case that you have uh, VGA capture with a lower frame rate and the video with, with full frame rate, then basically we wanted this to happen as well in the editing. Um, then if you go to slide number three, I think I'm already. Basically, uh, destructive trimming uh, means that we will actually change the original file because we don't want to run the risk of doing uh, a later um, re-encoding of media and then go back to those to the stuff that is uh, untrimmed, basically, especially in order to avoid uh, publishing lectures with the pauses there. And you can see how this matches with the archive that had been presented by Christoph earlier. Um, zero crossing editing or cross fading um, is something that I couldn't explain you. Basically, uh, any audio technician will tell you that it is necessary for a high quality editing uh, in order to avoid those nasty uh, crackles you have when you, when you edit the stuff. At least that's what they tell me. Um, also, we wanted to have some sort of automatic segmentation. So a recommendation system for where we could actually edit uh, the, 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 um, the file, which is quite obvious if you have silence and then you have uh, noise basically the system tries to detect these changes and suggest some, some editing points. Uh, other stuff, optional editing of audio only, synchronization of audio is pretty obvious. And with these goals or with these additional features, we went to Osnabrück, and this is where basically uh, Rüdiger can chime in, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, I come to a live demo of this uh, later on, so I skip uh, the slides of this and uh, would only go to what were um, yeah, the challenges that we had. Uh, we had um, needed an improved trimming UI um, compared to what we had in the past. We decided to use HTML5 for this to get better uh, yeah, key shortcut support and um, a better um, yeah, feature set of what we can do there, as I show later on. Um, yeah, we needed frame accurate seeking in the video so that you can find the right trimming points. Uh, we found out quite soon that the flash player that we had in the past would not allow us an accuracy um, better than nearly a second. Uh, so um, we were quite happy to find out that HTML5 video is really precise at this point and you can really uh, go frame by frame. Um, we um, wanted to uh, have a standard where, in which we store um, the edit list that we um, use for the video. So uh, we found uh, SMIL in the tiny specification, a uh, very nice um, yeah, standard. Also, it's not widely in use anymore to, as far as I see it. And we wanted... Um, yeah, as Olaf said, a real composed video out of it uh, that um, is um, within the video, everything that should be cut out should be away. And we found that GStreamer is a good option for this, and we were happy to find uh, the GNONLIN libraries that allow us um, to do some of the transitions that were needed, for example, not zero crossing, but uh, cutting without... Uh, uh, um, yeah, audio problems, for example. Um, <clears throat> okay, and I will go to the live demo I hope to find here. Um, as you may notice, it's... Um, so, PowerPoint was so kind to switch my screen. <laughs> um, Is 
So, um, okay. Um, we have uh, the standard admin UI that we um, enhanced with uh, video edit instead of um, the well-known trim. Um, you can simply um, select the video editor when you upload or schedule a video. It's uh, here instead of the trim um, uh, operation that you can optionally select. And um, if we look at the media, um, we will get the player, we get, uh, yeah, it's HTML5 video, we get automated uh, segmentation by silence detection. So what you see here, it's unfortunate that uh, this is a very silent video uh, so that you don't see a good representation of the waveform here. Uh, but um, it is simply de uh, detected where uh, no audio is in the video. And um, when I... Um, where's the play button now? Ah. Um, go to the different segment. Mm. It only took a while. Um, so um, we see um, that this will work quite well, and if you see the unexpected uh, segments here, you can notice in the video uh, that there are questions from the audience in this case that took longer than the 20 seconds that we uh, set as a minimum duration for a pause. Um, and uh, you can do your own cuts if you simply um, click here and create a new chapter. So the concept is that you split one segment into two, and if you don't want uh, one of these segments, you simply can select them here and delete them afterwards. So they become, uh, will be grayed out. And we have a wide variety of shortcuts available for the common um, video editing operations that you have. For example, pre and post roll of a segment so that you can play two seconds of the previous segment and then uh, skip the deleted segment and play your segment and skip the next segment when it's deleted and play uh, the follow-up so that you can really check uh, that it is quite well. But it's not a really um, uh, re-encoded um, video, so it's not perfectly, but it's quite good. So, um, uh, And, yeah, you can have a lot of uh, additional features here. And... Everything is keyboard controllable, for example, even uh, going frame by frame, as you might see in the time now that I am with my keyboard can go uh, frame by frame here um, through the video. Um, okay, as I said, we have uh, this edit list down here um, to delete certain chapters. When I would click continue processing, it will take quite a while um, to edit, um, uh, to compose a new video from that. But um, I prepared something too. That would be, for example, uh, this video, well known from the early Matterhorn days. Uh, I put it here into a dual stream version so that you can see that even with two videos um, aligned, uh, they uh, will be played uh, in parallel still. So that's one of the challenges that you would have if you take a matter or media package to a regular video editor um, out there. And, um, yeah, as you see here, for example, I skipped really away a, one of the chapters, and um, reliable scheduling uh, system there's uh, is no problem for the tool at all. Um, yeah, I guess uh, we have still something coming up in the presentation. Um, Did we mention the metadata editing? Um, you, can, you can also, while trimming, uh, you can also edit the metadata. So you can change metadata if you see that there is an additional speaker. You can edit uh, or add that. 
Okay. And what we also think we should be doing at this stage is to add metadata that is not uh, Dublin Core metadata. So, for example, if there is a technical problem with the video, you could indicate that in a separate field that you could then sort of transport to your various distribution ends, depending on your ability to do so. So, for example, if you have a, uh, like we have uh, um, uh, a content management system, um, you can tell the content management system to display uh, and information that this this uh, video has a problem with audio, for example, because this is where you would detect this. And we have some plans for 2013, of course. We will test uh, the trimming uh, at ETH um, until May, and then we'll go back to Osnabrück for some further refinements. Um, and basically, we hope to see a final release in June or July, um, of course, then also providing this to the greater community. Okay. okay, that's it. Any question? <laughs> it's destructive editing, I assume? Um, yeah. Was there any thought to um, doing sort of like the old, what we used to do in the days of real with the smile file and concatenating multiple clips um, and, and presenting those in the player as opposed to doing the destructive editing thing just to save time on getting it out the door? Um, we uh, selected the smile file with, uh, not without a reason. So uh, it will be part of the media package afterwards, and in a way you can exchange the composer that we created for this, for the destructive editing, by something that you implement in your streaming server or um, like Greg did uh, with... Um, um, yeah, the clip show stuff, um, you can even do it in the player if you want to. So um, in a way, it's simply um, we wanted to use a standard that others can adopt to afterwards. And um, you can, so it's all on your scenario too. If you um, want real destructive um, editing and throw away the source material, it's okay. You can do it with the archive, as we learned today. Um, and uh, you can do it in a different way. You simply can archive the smile file with the source material to reconstruct what you wanted to do afterwards. So um, it's up to you as an adopter how you implement it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> will it be possible to uh, split uh, one one video in, into two uh, with this tool, or this that's uh, out of the scope of this? Um, we did not implement it yet, uh, and as it was nothing that ETH demanded, <laughs> and we were focused on um, delivering our goals there. Uh, I would like to do a split up into several videos, but that could have been doable in the past too, as it's not something that comes from the video editor, what we would need is simply a button clone uh, in a trim state, I would say, so uh, that we could get a new media package ID or whatever to do this. So it will not be too complicated, but um, as I said, it's focused on what ETH demanded. <clears throat> uh, you saw uh, the video, actually two video on, on last uh, screen. Yep. Actually, is it means when you do the cutting, uh, it will uh, it will do uh, like uh, after you do the cutting, the video still synchronized, two videos. Um, the goal is to keep the videos synchronized. Yes, so um, you will see them if you have a dual stream video uh, in this view two next to each other, and um, yeah, you can simply. Um, if you cut the video, both videos will be cut in the post-processing at the same uh, times so uh, that they stay uh, synchronized as they are when they are ingested. If they are not synchronized when they are ingested, you still have a problem, but it uh, should be doable afterwards too. Okay, thank you. As far as the timing information, will there be a... REST interface, so that'll be accessible in the media package. If you if you just wanted to edit and get the in and out points and the, the cut points all along and save those, but not necessarily cut the video. Um, 
so currently there's no REST interface uh, to access this, but the SMILE file is part of the media package now. So um, you can open up the SMILE file in whichever way you want. So it's an XML that you can change and uh, re-ingest. So uh, probably it would be a nice idea to um, go um, with uh, an archive and uh, create a workflow that works from the archive to open up uh, the source material with the existing SMILE file. I guess that should be no problem as far as I remember. Um, the silence detection chapter marks are already in a previous SMILE file that would only be added there. But I'm not 100% sure. as I, It's an implementation detail that I'm not too aware of. Okay. Okay.